All right, we're now being joined by Mr. Aynar Tangen, who is a political and economic commentator. He joins us live from Beijing. So welcome to World DNA. Mr. Aynar, of course, uh, devastating news, devastating visuals which have come in from the Gansu province and the adjoining province as well. Uh, reports have also come in that China is anyway experiencing a harsh winter. Temperatures in the region have dipped to minus 14 degrees Celsius. What would be the actual... Uh, the the issues and the challenges that the rescue efforts the rescue workers would be facing at the moment well it's a combination of weather and aftershocks uh, mm. they're going to be very very careful but they are rushing aid to there uh, china has an excellent logistics system mm. and they're going to use that to pour aid and people into uh, help uh, you know, these uh, folks, I mean, the, the danger here is that many of the buildings, although they might be standing, might be in danger uh, from aftershocks. They need to get those people to safe areas. They need to get warm food, clothing, uh, restore the electricity, heating, gas, etc. These are all things that were severely impacted by uh, this earthquake. I remember, you know, China sits at the confluence of three tectonic plates and the Tibetan plateau, which is where this happened, is particularly um, you know, sensitive to this. In 1900, there was 200,000 people uh, died from an earthquake. This was a relatively deep earthquake, about 10 miles down. And uh, the, the possibility of aftershocks have increased because of where it was located. Uh, right, sir, as you mentioned as well, let's also talk about the infrastructure and preparedness in this case. As you mentioned, China sits on the confluence of three tectonic plates. What are the standard operating procedures in such a scenario? Of course, as Shivan mentioned as well, harsh winters have made the situation difficult as well. So what are the likely challenges that may come up going forward? Well, it's, you know, getting people uh, and... Um, supplies to the area is one issue. It's the safety of the area itself. Uh, as you continue to have aftershocks, uh, as I said, you have to move people out of the buildings that have been compromised, but you don't know which ones have been. So, you know, the uh, army will probably be used. Uh, they have a very, very strong uh, civil response um, program that they evolved for, you know, these types of, of emergencies. Uh, there is a tremendous amount of pre-planning that goes into this. Uh, they know that earthquakes are coming. Uh, the question is, how do you respond to them? So right now it's about getting people to safety, making sure they're safe and warm, uh, then inspecting buildings, and then trying to get people back to those areas uh, where they, they can be safe, warm, and continue life. But that also means restoring all the vital infrastructure, uh, heating, uh, obviously in this kind of cold, uh, you need that, you need cooking gas, etc. So it's it's a project that's going to take uh, weeks and months, uh, not, not uh, just a few days. Mr. Tang, and I also wanted to get your thoughts on this. Now, the Chinese leader, of course, Xi Jinping, had ordered deployment of heavy workforces to prevent secondary disasters, which could be caused due to factors beyond the earthquake. What factors are there beyond the earthquake which can cause further damage here? Well, he, he's referring to the fact that you could have building collapses, mm. uh, the interruption of services could severely impact uh, people's ability to stay warm. Uh, these are things that uh, China feels it can control. You cannot control the movement of the earth, uh, but you can control your reaction to it. And he's basically given orders, uh, as they have before, and in the 2000 uh, period when they had earthquakes, it said that human life has to be a priority here mm. uh, to the extent that there's rubble, they need to remove people as quickly as possible. Um, and these are all the things that they can do. Um, the aftershocks, they're just gonna have to deal with as they come. All right, Mr. Tangan, thank you so much for joining us on a World DNA, sharing all your insights. Of course, this is devastating news which has come in and here's hoping that the death toll does not increase any further and rescue efforts can be completed at the earliest people anyone who's stuck beneath ruffle any such instances can be tackled at the earliest